let's talk about the prehistoric world. That world had many creatures that lived within it that we'll never know about because they didn't leave any fossils behind. Or it might be that those fossils are just yet to be discovered. Either way, there are many mysteries of what lived out on the land, the air, and within the depths of the waters. This is the literal embodiment of the king shark, as it was the apex predator of the oceans and no one could top it, right? Well, that may not be true. There were actually some that were on its level. Here now are 20 sea monsters that are scarier than Megalodon. Number 20. Dunkleosteus you may look at this video and expect me to say this creature is capable of killing even the Megalodon, but that won't always be the case. There's a reason that the Megalodon was an apex predator of the deep, because it was so large and powerful that very few could even hope to match up against it. But just because few could match its strength and size doesn't necessarily mean that there weren't any creatures who were scarier than that in the waters of the ancient world. As in all things, context is key. A great example of this is the Dunkleosteus. In terms of size, this creature cannot match up to the Megalodon, but on the short end, it would be about 13 feet, with the largest being around 33 feet. The Megalodon is largely believed to have been around 60 feet in length, if not longer. And then when you talk about weight, the Megalodon is said to have maxed out at about 65 tons, where the Dunkleosteus maxes out at around 4 tons. So how is this thing scarier than the King Shark? Well, it's simple. The Megalodon is, in essence, a very large and aggressive shark shark. And in contrast, this creature is an armored fish with a very mean bite. That's right, the claim to fame of this creature is that it had armor plating on parts of its body that would make it quite the formidable opponent. Most fossils for the creature indicate that the armor was limited to its head and mouth, but some say that it might have even had it all over its body. Either way, this is one that was a literal tank in the ancient world, and that is worth your respect. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Leah Pluridan. Sometimes a creature can be scary simply because the people who have studied it have made grand exaggerations about what it is and what it is not. That applies to the Megalodon, as we will soon discuss, but another creature that it takes place with is this one. You may be familiar with this sea creature depending on what shows about the past that you've watched, but no matter what, it's an interesting creature from history. Getting to those exaggerations, one certain show would state that this creature might have been 80 feet in length, and that would make make it bigger than the Megalodon if it were true. But instead, it was a species known to be around 30 feet, and it's still scary, but not Megalodon level of scary. Though it should be said that the Megalodon's size has never been fully agreed upon, the average belief is about 60 feet, but they too said that at one time it could have been around 80 feet. It just goes to show that since we cannot see them in full outside of their fossils, which are rarely ever complete, we sometimes have to guess on such things based on what is known. So we'll talk about what we do know for this creature, like what kind of creature that it was. This one was a classic example of a family of marine reptiles that were characterized by their elongated heads, relatively short necks, and long flippers that were attached to thick torsos. It was able to use its body type to make itself an apex predator during the Jurassic period of history near Europe. That area during the Jurassic period had plenty of small fish and creatures for this one to swallow up, and that's why some of its remains were found in places like France. So if you're looking for a scary creature, perhaps you should always seek out an apex predator. Number 18, Big Fin Squid. I'm going to step away from the prehistoric era and jump into the modern day for a bit. You would think that given our world and how much that we know about it, that there can't be anything that could measure up to the Megalodon in terms of scariness. However, you would be wrong. The world is full of creatures that are terrifying for multiple reasons, and the big fin squid is one of them. One of the biggest reasons why this being is so terrifying is its appearance. While it does have some resemblance to an octopus and a squid, it actually has eight legs and two tentacles 
tentacles for the record. The overall shape of the creature makes it look more like an alien than anything else, and what's more, it has only been recorded a few times over the years, making its appearance a major event because it means that we could potentially learn more about it. Back in 2021, some researchers sent down a vehicle into the Gulf of Mexico and got eyes on the squid, and while they were amazed by the creature, they also had some serious questions. For example, they have no idea how it uses its arms or legs to swim and do a lot of other things. After all, those appendages are tiny compared to the size of its head, and you would think that they wouldn't be able to move much, and yet it gets around just fine. What's more, the tentacles apparently have microscopic suckers on them that the creature uses to trap prey and to eat, but how it came to have that over the course of its life is unknown. The big fin squid was first officially described only about 20 20 years ago. It was originally thought to be just one species, but eventually more of its kind were discovered. Number 17. Livia Tan we're finally getting to a creature that could legitimately take on the Megalodon if it wanted to. Whether these two actually clashed over the prehistoric years is unknown, but most would agree that this one was an apex predator that may have lived in the same waters as the Megalodon and had the ability to fight one off if necessary. But what exactly is it? Well, to put it more simple, it's an ancient sperm whale. That might already set off some alarm bells for you because you know that sperm whales are one of the more aggressive whales out there in the waters today. Day. But when it comes to the Livia Tan, it's another level of aggression. These were apex predators that would happily eat its own kind or any other whales if it meant that it was getting fed and it had the size to scare anything and anyone that got close. Based on fossil estimates, the whale was at max about 57 feet long, and that would put it really close to the size of the megalodon. But wait, there's more. Its teeth were over a foot long, meaning that it could truly sink its teeth into the flesh of its prey. Speaking of prey, since it's possible that the Liviatan met the Megalodon, it's very fair to assume that both creatures had the same kinds of food for their menu. Given that these creatures were rather large, they would have needed to consume large amounts of food in order to survive. So if you had a couple of these creatures in the same waters, the other species would have been dropping like flies because these two would not have been able to keep eating. Interestingly enough, the Liviatan and the Megalodon were both said to have died out due to the warming of the waters in the areas mixed with the lowered population of the species that they ate. It's also believed that the creature was the inspiration for Moby Dick. Number 16. Helicoprion Here's a creature that many of you may have heard of, not because of its size, but because of the way that it looks. The Helicoprion is a creature that is famous for its mouth because the fossils that have been recovered from their remains indicate that the fish had some kind of buzzsaw-like mouth. That's right, this is a sea monster that somehow evolved to the point where its mouth may have been shaped like a buzzsaw. The buzzsaws are also known as tooth whorls, and they showcase how the creature has evolved to harness such a thing. For example, the teeth are the biggest and sharpest in the center of the world, and they decrease the more that they go out. Equally as odd is that there have been many fossils that have been found of this creature, but it's mainly just the whorls. No one is exactly sure why this is the case, and due to that, there are many who wonder if the buzzsaw is really how this creature had its mouth, or if it's some other explanation that needs to be taken. Also, because we do not have a full skeleton to work with at times, scientists have had to stuff the mouth parts that they did have to see if they could understand how the heck the thing ate. It turns out that the outside teeth hooked and dragged prey into its mouth, and then the middle teeth pierced and cut the prey, while the posterior teeth pushed the prey into its oral cavity. So as said before, every part of this buzzsaw had a purpose. But the question does remain, is this thing scarier than a megalodon? Well, megalodons don't have buzzsaws in their mouths. Sometimes the scare factor may be bigger when you're looking at something you don't recognize. Number 15. The Titan Boa now, this one is probably cheating a little bit, but I think that it's worth mentioning because this is definitely a creature from prehistoric times that is scarier than the king shark. You see, back in prehistoric times, there were 
plenty of creatures that had a massive size gap on the beings that we have in the world right now, the Titan Boa is an excellent example of that, as it is the largest snake that's ever been recorded on Earth. But just how big are we talking? Well, the largest snakes in the world today can get above 30 feet with various amounts of weight attached to them. But those are indeed the outer limits. With the Titan Boa, though, this was a behemoth that was 50 feet long, 3 feet wide, and weighed over 2,500 pounds. Thankfully, the snake has long since been gone, as it existed 60 million years ago in places like South America and also apparently California. What's more, these creatures were around at the perfect time in history to help exert their dominance. It came about right after the dinosaurs had left the Earth, and that meant that there was a power vacuum and snakes like this one filled it up for a time. Despite its size, it was able to blend in perfectly to wooded areas in which it lived. However, when it comes to how it got its food, scientists actually disagree on the method. Some think that it acted like a boa constrictor and squeezed the life out of its prey before consuming it, while others feel that it would hide in waiting and then lash out to bite its food before eating the rest. Either way, the snake thankfully died out and nothing close to it exists in our world today. Number 14. Pitcadus Mortoni And here we have yet another shark for you to gaze at. This creature was a species of shark that also had a unique kind of mouth, but instead of having teeth like a buzzsaw, it had a mouth that was more like a hammer. What do I mean by that? Well, this one was a shark that was known as the shell breaker. The teeth of the shark were rounded rather than being triangular and pointy, and they have a series of ridges that runs across the surface of the crown. These ridges would have increased the bite pressure, along with the length of the ridges, something that would have helped to hold on to smooth, shelled shell fish while also focusing the bite pressure onto key areas of the shell. And if you think about it like this, many creatures in the ocean try and grow a shell so that they can repel the sharp-toothed creatures that are around them, which include sharks. But this one was smart enough to evolve beyond other shark species and get their teeth that could pound shells until they cracked, ensuring that it would get a meal. Then when you add in the fact that the shark species was about 33 feet in length and you picture how big those mouths would have been with those rounded teeth, you get a combination that made this shark pretty scary because it was able to evolve well beyond what its prey evolved into. Number 13. Hibidus here now is an example of another smart shark. The Hibidus was a kind of shark that was much, much smaller than the Megalodon, but was also clever enough to get whatever meal it needed to survive. It had a streamlined body that would help it to glide through the water. It's not unlike many modern sharks in that respect. But it is the teeth of this shark that would set it apart. It has multiple kinds of teeth that are tailored to taking out various prey. They had sharper teeth that would have been used to catch slippery prey, while the flatter teeth probably helped them to crush the shelled creatures. No matter what it had a hankering for, it had the option to exploit, but given that this shark species was only about 6 feet in length, could it reasonably be said that it was scarier than the Megalodon? Well, it's all about context. For the Megalodon, it didn't really have to think of itself as being hunted. All it had to do was go to an area with a lot of fish and then eat them indiscriminately. As long as it got its food, it was in good shape. But for this one, they could pick and choose what they wanted to eat and know that their teeth could handle it. Sometimes a more precise foe is a more scary one. Number 12. Ichthyosaur now we'll get to a creature that is definitely on par with the Megalodon in terms of size. The Ichthyosaur were a kind of fish lizard that was alive hundreds of millions years ago, and they were said to have been a kind of lizard-like creature that went into the sea and then evolved to live there. But despite the transition, they kept their massive size, which made them incredible predators. How big did they get, though? Well, estimations would state that they could get up to 66 feet in length, so even with the more average sizes of the Megalodon that have been put out there, the Ichthyosaur matches up to it. What is up with all of these giant sea monsters of the past? We have big creatures in our oceans today, but some of these guys are just ridiculous. And before I forget, it is important to say that the Ichthyosaur is not a dinosaur. 
dinosaur, it's actually been classified as a marine mammal of one type or another. Another interesting thing is that like many in its time period, the ichthyosaur evolved over the ages of its life cycle. That allowed it to change forms and handle all sorts of changes in the world. Plenty of fossils have been found of the ichthyosaur, and they are quite enamored with it. If the megalodon has ever been enamored with the ichthyosaur, well, that just remains to be discovered. Number 11. Temnodontosaurus Sticking with a species that I just talked about, the Temnodontosaurus is one of the biggest and one of the oldest of that line. In fact, when the species as a whole was first discovered, it was because of a skull of the Temnodontosaurus. As for the size of the creature, that's where things can become a little bit tricky. As is typical when doing estimations off of fossils and incomplete skeletons, many people have guessed what could be the size of this creature, but with little proof to back it up. There are some who say that the creature was able to be up to 30 feet in some species, and others say that it could have easily gotten to 50 feet, which could put it on par with the megalodon at times. Regardless of its size, it was a powerful predator. It had incredible eyes that it would use to seek out its prey. Its diet likely consisted of many vertebrates, such as fish and other dinosaurs, and yes, it was known to eat its own kind, a common trait in that world as you've seen before. The teeth of this creature were also of interest to scientists because they are made in a way to help withstand breaking off when biting into more hard enemies. Here's yet another creature that is rather large, not afraid to eat its own family, and evolved to be a better hunter. Number 10. Odidas Would you like to take a stab at what the Odidas is? Well, yes, it's a shark, because of course it is. There were plenty of sharks out in the prehistoric world, and many of them were quite terrifying. Sharks are still scary today, but we can handle them a lot more and easier than we could these ones. For example, with the Odidas, it was a shark that dwarfed most sharks in our world, and it did dwarf all predatory sharks from our era. They were at max about 44 feet long, which is a really big shark, and what's more, they had a very high growth rate that made them rather rather scary, which means that they didn't have to wait to get big, it just happened naturally. And when you combine that with the traits of this creature, and you look at a full set of their teeth, well, you'll see that those are some kind of jaws that you wouldn't want to be in or around. Number 9. Tusotiathus this creature is a tricky animal to talk about for multiple reasons, the biggest one being that not many know about it due to the very few fossil records that have been recovered. In fact, only one part of this creature has ever really been recovered and preserved. However, what's commonly believed is that it was a squid. Thankfully, people have been able to learn some things about the squid as a result. This is a very ancient squid that matches up with some of the biggest squids that we have in the world today. They were actually able to get above 40 feet in length. The irony is that while they were great hunters, they were not exactly the biggest thing in the sea. Many of the creatures that we've talked about here could have very well taken one on and eaten it, and many of them did just that. Number 8. Stethacanthus the Stethacanthus is a scary sea monster not because of its size or its ferocious nature, rather it's scary because nobody has any idea why it looks the way that it does. In this case, I'm talking about its anvil-shaped dorsal fin that you can clearly see in the pictures. No one's exactly sure why it evolved to be like that, especially since it doesn't line up with a majority of what other sharks have. Remember, the fin of the top of the shark's body is meant to help ensure that it can cut through the water quickly to get its prey but that odd shape would have slown it down, which would have made it counterproductive. The best explanation that's been given for this fin is that it might have been used to attach itself to a mate during the proper season. Number 7. The Bobbit Worm I'm going back to the present to talk about a creature that you may not expect to be compared to a massive shark. That would be a worm. And it's not just any kind of worm. It's one that's named after a woman who attacked her husband in some very sensitive places, if you get my drift. I have no doubt he had it coming, though. The bobbit worm goes into the ocean and buries itself into the ground, but it leaves its head protruding out so that it can catch food in a very terrifying way. 
Five antenna protrude from its head to act like a tripwire. If the fish should accidentally brush past one of them, it has mere milliseconds to flee. The bobbit worm's razor-sharp mouth parts strike with such velocity that its prey will sometimes be sliced clean in two. Yes, it can do that, and while a shark like the Megalodon could likely bite someone in two, you would never expect such an action from a worm. Number 6. Arthropleura What's scarier than a worm from the present day that's more ferocious than it should be? Well, how about an ancient centipede that is way bigger than it should have been? When you think of the centipedes and millipedes of today, they'll get to be around a foot long at most, enough to freak you out, but not enough to murder you if it wanted to. However, with this thing, it was over eight feet long. That is one pretty huge creature, and while it's never been confirmed, many believe that it was venomous. Then again, some people also believe that the Arthropleura was an herbivore, or possibly an omnivore. Nobody really knows, so we still clearly have a lot to learn about the past, as you can see. But either way you look at it, this is one centipede slash millipede that we hope never gets brought back to life. Number 5. The Chronosaurus when you're called one of the largest and most dangerous creatures of a time period, well, that makes you scary by default. What's more, when you're named for a Greek titan that tried to murder his children and stay in power, that paints quite the image, I would think. But in terms of scariness and power, the Chronosaurus was not to be messed with. But there is a twist to it all, though. The Chronosaurus did not have the best teeth in the world. They weren't all that sharp. So why was it hailed as being so deadly? Well, that's because they were incredible incredibly fast in the ocean and had such a powerful bite that it didn't matter that it couldn't pierce you because they would probably kill you on raw power alone. Number 4. Sarcosuchus I've shown you plenty of prehistoric versions of modern creatures, but one that I haven't touched on are the crocodiles and alligators of the past. I'll change that by talking about the Sarcosuchus, and something that everyone should be glad isn't walking around the world today. The Sarcosuchus could grow to be almost 40 feet in length, and that means that they had a ton of power to burn and use on their prey. However, as to what that prey was, nobody honestly knows. No one's entirely sure about how capable that this thing was at doing things when hunting, or whether they settled for an easier target. But still though, a 40-foot crocodile walking around or swimming in the deep, that's certainly a danger to everyone. Number 3. Dumbo Octopus There are many ways to measure fear and it's not always about size and power. Sometimes it's about being so chill with who you are and where you are that you don't really need things to ward off foes. The Dumbo Octopus is one such example of that, and it's from the modern day as well, at around 13,000 feet below sea level, if not lower at times. And as a result of that, it lives in pitch black darkness, but it doesn't mind any of that at all. It doesn't even have an ink sac like others in its species because it's rarely attacked by any kind of predator. And yes, it was actually named after a certain Disney elephant. Number 2. The Frilled Shark This is another example of being scary beyond being huge and powerful, because the frilled shark species was around millions of years ago, and it's still around today. It's a kind of creature that's known as a living fossil due to how it's been around for millions of years, and no one's exactly sure how it survived. Plus, if you look at the body of the frilled shark, you're going to notice that it looks much different from the sharks that we have in our modern world, or even those of ancient times. It honestly has a more bending body that makes it feel like an eel more than anything else. So while many of the creatures from the ancient world are not around anymore, this one still is, and it still freaks people out. Number 1. Mosasaurus do you remember the first Jurassic World movie? You know, the one that was actually kinda good? The end of the movie was punctuated by the Indominus Rex being taken out by a massive creature from the depths. Well, that was the Mosasaurus, and it was just as intimidating in real life. These things were over 50 feet long and had an incredible hunting ability that made them very fierce in the waters. What's more, it was not only a fish, it was also an aquatic reptile, and it took people quite a while to figure that out. What also may surprise you is that despite the size of the creature, it was one that loved living near the surface of the water to ensure that it could catch its prey and breathe the air from the surface.
That's all from the realm of prehistory and the sea monsters that could match the Megalodon in terms of scariness, if not ferocity as well. Were you surprised that there were so many terrors of the ocean back in the day? And does it make you happy that they're all gone and you don't have to deal with them? Which ones do you believe are scarier or more deadly than the Megalodon? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.